All right, Paul, so we've just seen how kind of gravity affects and the energy we need to escape, say, the Earth or even the sun, but how does this actually practically work with putting a spacecraft in orbit around the Earth? Okay, so we've seen that um, if you're to stay in space, you need to be in an orbit. Yeah. Which you can't just sit still in space. That's right, you're constantly you're... falling and missing the Earth. That's right. And if you want to be in a low orbit, close to, say, the Earth, you have to go fast. Yep. You go around very quickly. If you're further out, it will take you longer to go around. Yep. So let's see um, what this would work for actual Earth orbit satellites. Okay. So the most common orbit is a low Earth orbit. That's L -E -O. right. L-E-O. It's even got its own acronym. It's so common. Exactly. That's right. And so here you can see I've put an object in an orbit 800 kilometers up around the equator of the Earth. That's right. And so 800 kilometers is well within the perfect sweet spot of 200 to 2,000 kilometers where we usually put these. Yes, you put it much lower than a couple of hundred kilometers, the atmospheric drag is going to pull you down. There's just a little bit of atmosphere up there. Exactly. Uh, further out, you're, it works fine for an orbit, but it costs you more fuel to get it there. And normally, you want to be in one of these orbits so you're close to the Earth. So you want to exactly. be as low as you can get away with. Without, without being too low. That's right. So this is 800 kilometers, which is where the space station is. Yep. A lot of, for example, the Starlink communication satellites are a bit lower. Exactly. 300 or 500 kilometers. Some are a little bit further out, but this is all low Earth orbit. And what you can see is that uh, you're going pretty fast. You're around, you're traveling about 27,000 kilometers an hour to stay in a low Earth orbit. That's right. Which is your eight kilometers every second. And you need to um, go around the world every roughly 90 minutes, hour so, and a so, half. So that means pretty much daily you're going around at least a dozen, closer to 15, 16 times in one single day. That's right. Um, and you can, you can uh, because you're quite low, you don't see the whole Earth. So here's a view of what you've got from a low Earth orbit. This is a view from the International Space Station. And you can see the Earth like fills half the sky. You're pretty close to the Earth. That's right. So you, you get to see enough of the curvature of the Earth and you get to see enough of space. And as you said, it's that trade-off between trying to see low and also being high enough that you're not skimming the atmosphere here. That's right. But you're not going to see a huge amount of the Earth from this. That's and right. If you're going over northern Australia, you're not going to see New Zealand. Exactly. Maybe right on the horizon you can get a view, but you won't be able to spy on it very effectively. That's right. And you're only going to see one spot for a short amount of time because you're traveling 27,000 kilometers an hour. That's right. Um, and here's the ground tracks. So what I'm doing here is okay. I'm plotting what point on the Earth you're directly overhead. Yeah. Okay. So here we've got an orbit over the equator. So we've launched perfectly at zero degrees and we're staying at zero degrees. Yes, yeah, so you might have launched from somewhere like the, the French spaceport in Kourou and, yep. um, and you're just going around the equator. And in this case, this, this is, it would be very useful or but if, for example, you wanted to have a spy stuff like to spy on Singapore. That's right. But you're not going to really see that much of the poles, right? Because, well, as you, we just saw in the previous video, you're going to have to look around. It's going to be really hard to see the top side. Yes, you'd go over Singapore every 90 minutes, so you get a regular time lapse of what's happening over there. Um, but you're not going to be able to see what's happening in London or Sydney. But, for instance, if you are Singapore and you want to put a satellite that gives you hourly monitoring of Singapore, this is a very good orbit for you. If you wanted to do mobile phone communications in Singapore, you'd, one of these is not going to be enough. You'd be able to talk for a few minutes <laughs> That's right. once every 90 minutes. But if you had like 10 of these things going around, or 20, I don't know the exact number, it would depend on the electronic detail, yep. then you could have one that's over Singapore all the time. Exactly. So it really, I guess, depends on where you want and how much you want to see it. Now, most people want to look at some other part of the Earth than just the equator. Yep. And so instead of launching in a, an orbit around the equator, you might launch at an angle. Okay. So you could launch it from the equator at an angle, or you could launch from somewhere away from the equator, like uh, Cape Canaveral. So, so if it's essentially straight above you and you launch that, you're going to kind of stay at that angle, as you said, from Cape Canaveral or Australia even. Yeah. So what you can see is your spacecraft's always going to stay orbiting in the same plane. What's That's happening right. is the Earth is spinning underneath you. So, okay, so it's not the spacecraft that's changing, it's essentially the Earth and the spacecraft relative to Earth. Yes, the spacecraft is just sitting in the same plane endlessly, and then the Earth spins underneath it. Okay, so what does this actually mean in terms of our coverage on the ground? Okay, so here's the, the ground track of this, which is launched at a 30 degree angle. Yep. Or could have been launched yep. 30 degrees north. Yep. Um, and what you can see is it's doing a sort of a wave oscillating north and south. Um, and every time it goes around, the Earth's moved 
So that's right. So so by because the Earth has moved that in that hour that we've gone around, we're shifted by a little bit on the ground every time. So we shift more and then more and then more. Yes. And what you can see is over time, you're building up coverage of probably everywhere from about 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south of the equator. Okay. So that's a, a much bigger chunk of the Earth that would be uh, useful for spying on many tropical areas. But can... we're still not going to see the far extremes, right? That's right. So let's say instead of launching at 30 degrees, you launch at 60 degrees. Okay. So here's a 60 degree uh, orbit. So again, we could either launch from the equator at 60 degrees or go, say, to Sweden almost and launch straight up, which they do. Yes, and of course, if you're launching from the old Soviet Union, you pretty much had to launch at an inclined angle. That's right. Um, and now, uh, if we look at the ground track, we can see that we're covering most of the world's population. Okay, so we're really covering a lot of the population, but the shift is still happening. In fact, the shift is happening more than at 30 degree angle. So the more... Well, it still takes 90 minutes to go around, yep. so the Earth's still... Turning. But that turned the same amount each orbit. Yep. The trouble is you're now covering more area, so you're going to visit any particular place less often. Okay, so it's kind of a trade-off between how often you want to cover a specific spot and how much you want to cover. Yes, and so this sort of your 55, 60 degree orbit is used a lot uh, because it covers most of the world's population. I mean, if you live in northern Norway, tough. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you live in Antarctica, Tough as well, that's right. But most of the world's people, um, you've got you know, all of China, pretty much all of Europe, apart from the northern bits of Norway, um, most of the inhabited bits of Canada, most of South America, all of Australia. Yeah, that's right. So this covers most of the world's population. So, for example, a lot of communication satellites or Earth observation satellites will have orbits with this sort of tilt. Exactly. I think even the International Space Station's around 57 degrees, partially because it was la uh, launched from one of those old uh, former Soviet Union republics, as you said, and it covers most of the inhabited Earth. Yeah, but if you do want to cover the entire Earth, then you need a polar orbit. So you're launching at 90 degrees, or launching from the pole or something like yep. this. And an orbit like this goes right over the North and South Poles. Yep. Um, and again, it's, it's all staying in the same plane. It's yep. not moving, but as the Earth rotates around it, it'll slowly cover the entire Earth. So here's the uh, Earth track of this. Okay, and so we're really essentially going up and down and up and down. Yes. And in fact, some satellites can do what we call, um, you know, a sun orbit or sun chasing orbit where they're aligned relative to the polar orbit and where the sun's position is on the Earth. Yes, so what they actually do for that, I, I said that the plane of the satellite remains the same. Um, that's actually not quite true. If the Earth was a sphere, it would remain exactly the same, but the Earth actually bulges out around right. a little bit, much like I do. <laughs> um, and this actually causes the orbit to what's called precess, to move very slowly around. You won't see it over one orbit or even ten orbits. That's right. But if you pick it in just the right orbit once a year, it will precess all the way around. Yep. What that means is, for example, you can have it so it goes over a given point at midday and then midnight, yep. and it keeps doing that all year round. Yep. Um, and that's useful to give very consistent, so the shadow is always in the same direction, which makes it sometimes easier to interpret your Earth observation. Exactly, yep. So that's, that's the sort of families of low Earth orbits. And we can have anything in between, right? We can have 10 yes. degrees, 80 degrees. And so really what's going to determine is, I guess, where we can launch from and really what we want to do. Because again, if we want to, say, spy on Darwin, for instance, you don't want to have a polar orbit because not that useful. Uh, if you want to cover all of the inhabited area, you probably want to launch in that 30 to 50 degree range. That's right. 